Hello, today I will be giving you a vocal tour as we drive around the Catawba Island Peninsula on Catawba Island, Ohio. The road that we are currently on right now is called Sand Road. This is because in the early 1800s, it was entirely made of sand and was very hard to traverse. Consequently, this was one of the only ways to get to and from the island before other access roads were made. On the right here is the historic Holt Cottage, built by Charles E. Holt in 1905. A Toledo businessman, he often retired here in the summer with his family to enjoy the island views. Up here on our left, we'll be turning down Wine Cellar Road to take a look at the historic Catawba Island Winery and the Betsy Mo John Cabin. The winery was built in 1872 as a cooperative between grape growers and winemakers from Catawba Island and Marblehead. It operated by these people until 1937 with the repeal of Prohibition, when it was sold to the owner of the Monami Wine and Champagne Company based out of Texas. On the left through the trees, you will see what remains of an old log cabin. This log cabin is all the remains of the original homestead of the last Native American to live in the area named Betsy Mo John. We are now driving up the east side of the island. As I pan around, you will see a lot of the land is agriculturally based. This is due to the area's rich history with the peach and grape industry. While many other different crops are grown on Catawba now, 150 years ago, a lot of the land used for agricultural purposes on Catawba was used to grow grapes.
Nowadays, one of the island's biggest attractions is its accessibility by boat. This brings many boaters from the surrounding northern Ohio lakeside areas to come to Catawba to enjoy their vast marina services. The northeastern side of the island was once home to many orchards, wineries, and hotels. Up here on the right, you will see a patch of trees that look like they are growing over a cellar. This is the original cellar for the Gideon Owen Wine Company. Though the winery has since burned down, the cellar remains intact and can still be used to store wine. Here, we are turning down East Porter Street, named after one of the original settlers on the island. Up here on the left, you will see the Catawba Union Chapel, which is now the home of the Catawba Island Historical Society. Built in 1888 as a Sunday school, the land that it was originally on was donated free of charge as long as the church would remain non-denominational, hence the name Union Chapel. We are now approaching the northern end of the island. In the distance there, you can see Mouse Island, which today is largely uninhabited. This section here in the northern part of the island was once home to many inns and hotels. And in the 1850s, this area was once known as Ottawa City, a place where local workers of the cement company located on Catawba could live and work. However, the industry closed shortly after starting due to the quality of product that was being made. In front of us, you can see the Miller Ferry Line, which shuttles passengers and cars to the islands and back. The Miller Ferry was originally started as an ice company, which used the dock to transport ice to parts of northern Ohio and the Catawba area. We will soon be entering the Catawba Cliffs private residential community. 
The Cliffs is one of the oldest private residential communities on the island. It was also once home to the Catawba cement industry, which only lasted for about five years before it was realized that the product being produced was insufficient in making cement. On the right side of the road here, you will see a pink stucco house sitting on top of a cliff. This cliff once held the image of an Ottawa native by the name of Nabagon. Since the house was built, and also due to inclement weather from the lake, the image of Nabagon is no longer on this cliff edge. However, his image has appeared in another cliff somewhere else in the community further down the lake.
We are now entering the Catawba Island State Park. This park has many features like a pier, a shelter facility, restrooms, and a boat launch. The boat launch is the most used feature in this park and allows for bass fishermen and walleye fishermen alike to launch their boats. Here you will see the Catawba Island Club entrance from the lake. The Catawba Island Club has a golf course, a marina, and a hotel with restaurant services. The hotel was built in the early 1900s by an architect from Toledo. However, due to the Great Depression, the hotel was never fully completed, and what remains today is only one-fourth of the original intended design. On the right is the Catawba Island Centralized Schoolhouse. Built in 1912 to accommodate all the children on the island, the schoolhouse operated as a school for elementary school students until 2007.
We are now approaching Rock Ledge, one of the best lake views on the island. Rock Ledge is also home to the Holt Cottage and Rock Ledge Inn, which were both established in the early 1900s. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed your tour of Catawba Island.